My father is a very special man. He is the most inspirational man I know. He's the kindest, most genuine, passionate, generous man I know. The earliest memory I have of my father is him picking me up from my mom's uh, in his convertible Datsun 240Z. In 1972, he chopped it off and had a convertible. That's the earliest memories I have. Uh, life for my dad growing up was very difficult. Uh, he comes from a very abusive father and a very tough life. They were artichoke farmers in Italy. Uh, moved to uh, Canada when my dad was 13 years old. His mom, uh, Vincenza Redavid, and his father, Pasquale Redavid, they were old school. They were tough, his father especially. Life for them here in Canada was tough. You know, my dad uh, doesn't share too many stories with me about his life here because it was so difficult and he likes to focus on positive things. But life was very hard fitting in, being a uh, you know English new language student in, in Vancouver. My dad had one year of high school in Canada under his belt before he had to drop out and get a job in construction to provide for his family. He worked in the mining camps up north in Prince Rupert uh, as a cement mason. What got me started in the industry is a funny story. Um, I used to work in construction and uh, I went to the school barber shop and got my hair cut and uh, when they blow dried it they looked like a mess and there was no way I was going to go out on a you know Saturday night so I went back to home I shampooed my hair I blow dried it again and it, it turned out absolutely perfect that's when he decided to become a hairdresser my dad is a very humble man. He's not afraid of hard work. And what he did was he went to all the best salons in Vancouver and offered up his time for free. He said, let me sweep the floors, let me blow dry the hair, let me, let me just learn from you. And he went to all of the best hairdressers and, and apprenticed under them in Vancouver, Eric London uh, Salon in Vancouver. He trained under him and, you know, he did his schooling. He went six months in school. But, uh, you know, the teacher at one point, my dad was just like, you know, his, I'm not getting anything more out of this. He's like, can I go and just do my time in the field and learn and train and apprentice? And that's what he did for years. And I uh, just learned the best of the best from, from uh, the best hairdressers of Vancouver and then made it his own. You know, I had more fun working inside the salon. I, uh, hairdressing came really fast to me. My son, you know, was everything to me. He actually saved my life because I was quite a partier when I was doing shows and traveling everywhere and having the spotlights. In the weekends, I'd be a weekend dad where, you know, no drinking, no partying. Uh, you know, we go to Stanley Park and go do pitch and putt and uh, we go get on bikes and we try to race around the seawall. I didn't know how to be a dad be truthful because my dad was not a great dad so it was all self-taught so I did the best that I knew how. A relationship with my son had really changed a lot when uh, he became he got into golf and uh, we spent a lot of time in the car um, and I used to drive him everywhere so it was really fun you know seeing him grow up. Amazing. I mean, it was a, my mom called him a Disneyland dad type of a thing. So, you know, every time I, I wanted to hang out with my dad, it was we were doing fun stuff. We were riding the seawall or going for a cruise in his sports car or going on trips and stuff. But, you know, there was there was some tough times as well that I remember with my dad. I mean, to me as a child, I don't remember how difficult it was for him. I just remember, you know, we, my dad actually, when my mom and him divorced, he sold everything he owned, he sold his stats in Roadster, he sold the car and he put everything into Redavid and we were actually living in a warehouse off of First Avenue. Uh, my dad had all the boxes of Redavid and he just put a bed on the side of the room and a little TV stand and that's where he was living to chase his dream. When you don't have role models in the family, you're in the water and you gotta swim and you better learn how to swim fast. 
otherwise you're gonna drown. I had to learn really fast. Working in the salon, it was really amazing. Being behind the chair, you meet so many different people. And if you're a listener, those people leave you all kinds of different messages. And I learned how to speak English. You know, it's still not that great. <laughs> the Italian accent never went away. But I learned a lot about uh, feelings um, because people, you know, talk a lot when they're in the chair. So it was uh, a matter of learning and uh, my clients really taught me a lot. The opportunity was, uh, it was with Matrix, it was a big company. There were like three stage artists, uh, real nice guys. And, you know, I think it was, uh, anybody wants to come up and uh, do a haircut. And somehow, you know, my hands went up and I had all my salon with me and they would go, yeah, Leo, you can do it. Go up there and go cut some hair. And uh, they got me a model, they gave me a pair of scissors and, uh, I just went for it and uh, they were like impressed. They said, my God, we've never seen anybody cut hair so fast. So it was fun. It was in the 80s. Uh, everybody was uh, having a great time. You know, the disco days. <laughs> my dad was a stage artist for the who's who in the hair industry. He used to be a stage artist for Wella, Tresemme, Joico, Revlon, Matrix. When they wanted the crazy Italian to get up on stage and wow the ladies with hair down to here, you know, he was, he was the artistic director for Joico Canada. He just loved everything about being on stage and having fun and creating. He's the most creative man ever when it comes to hair. Like, he looks at somebody's head and the cuts come to him and sometimes he'll be mid-cut and He'll be like, ah, the hair is speaking to me, it wants to do this, and he'll change it in midway. And like, you know, classically trained hairdressers have a heart attack when that happens, you know, and I've seen him go up on stage and take somebody's hair down to here and just whop off half of it and go and do a pixie cut in 10 minutes and just wow people. But um, he looked at his station one day and he saw 15 different brands of products and he decided that he wanted to create a hair care product that had the best of the best, so you only needed to use one brand. Every product in that line worked, and most hairdressers will cherry pick the best products from different brands, and he wanted to create something that was the best of the best, so. All started in the salon. Everything starts in the salon. All starts with the feeling in your fingers and when you touch the hair. My station had probably 10 different brands, and what I did is, uh, I wanted to combine the best of the best in one line. That's how I started it. It was trying to uh, get the feelings from the best product that were out on the market and make it better and make it uh, more natural. In 1986 was his first product line. It was called Just Hair Care. And my dad, uh, had a chemist, a skincare chemist, Richard. He owns Optoderm Labs in, in Vancouver. And he was sitting, he used to be a client of his and sitting in his chair and he said, Richard, uh, I wanna make a hair care product line. And Richard said, well, I don't have, I don't have any hair care product ingredients. I just do skincare. And my dad uh, said, well, let's use skincare emulsifiers and skincare ingredients. So since 1986, Red David has been, you know, skincare, uh, great ingredients in hair care products. The first iteration of Redavid was in 1992. He launched in Shoppers Drug Marts across Canada. In January of 1992, he had $10,000 in sales, and by December, he had a million dollars in sales. He was the man that was, you know, in the front lines. And I, re I remember I went on a, one of my fondest memories is a road trip. We did uh, Prince George, Williams Lake, and Quinnell. And we took the little Red David uh, transporter van and it was logoed and we would go up there and my dad would do makeovers in Shoppers Drug Mart. So I was nine years old at the time and uh, you know he would make me fold these pamphlets and then go hand them out to people as they walked by and ask ladies if they wanted uh, a makeover from you know my dad. Nobody said no to the little nine year old coming up in a suit. My dad always had me decked out in like mechs for kids clothes and I was always stylish and uh, that was my first job with Redavid actually in 1992 I was nine years old. 
Uh, it was it was awesome to see my name. I didn't know the extent of it or how much it meant back then, but now you know seeing our name on a bottle that people resonate with, you know, honesty and results and luxury fills me with pride for sure. There was lots of mistakes. Uh, one of the biggest ones for my dad was putting trust in the wrong people. Uh, he was taken advantage of left, right and center. And the story that I just mentioned about the uh, Redavid and Shoppers Drug Mart, my dad actually lost control of that company because uh, a friend of his wanted to take it public and my dad trusted him and my dad ended up losing controlling share of the company. And it went under and that was it. My dad went back to cutting hair. So he's always gone back to cutting hair. He's, he's done the product and then if it failed, he went back to cutting hair. Uh, he opened up a big salon in Vancouver, but he always, always had a passion for creating products. So even in his salons, he would create custom lines that had Redavid aromatherapy products just for sale in his salon. So he's always had that passion for products, but he always has gone back to cutting hair. You know, he, he doesn't cut hair anymore. Uh, he sold his last latest salon, Anne's Hair Studio on Dunsmuir. I stopped cutting hair about four years ago. That was the hardest part of my life, really, uh, because a salon, it was the foundation that I've gone broke many times trying, you know, different hair care product line, but the salon was always like the savior. And I, it was really hard saying goodbye to so many customers that I've had for years. And you know, this is the last haircut and they start crying and I'm crying with them. I go home and I'm still depressed because you know, you're saying goodbye to a lot of good friends that you've had for a very long time. That was a very difficult time. You know, he still gets customers that he's had since the Prince Rupert days that will come down and fly down and he'll cut them in his kitchen and they, they don't want to go to anybody else. They just want to get their hair cut by my dad. And they, you know, we get messages on Facebook, please, what can we do? I'll pay anything. I haven't been able to find a hairdresser in 15 years. You know, I'll, I'll pay you 300 bucks to cut my hair, Leo. And it's pretty, you know, that he, he just, he's just good at what he does and, and he has a passion for it, which is infectious. Uh, story is different. I used to be a golf professional. Uh, I used to teach golf. I was not in the hair industry. I mean, I've always been around it. I worked with my dad. My summer jobs were in his salon in downtown Vancouver as the receptionist, you know, 13, 14 years old, working as a receptionist in a salon. I grew up very fast, uh, you know, hearing things around the salon as a young kid. But, um, you know, I'd always been around it and I'd always known, but uh, yeah, I, I had no idea. My dad never pushed me into the family business. He never, never taught me to cut hair. Or I never, I never had a desire for that side of things. Uh, back in the day, I left the golf course. The timing was right. Uh, my dad had somebody important in the company leave him high and dry, uh, and needed some help. And I just said, you know, I was a business student myself, and I said, you know, Dad, maybe I can help out a few days a week. And I just started with like the social media side of things where I was commenting and helping with their social media and then it just sort of naturally evolved into me starting to make more decisions and me kind of, I, I took to it very uh, quickly I guess and um, I saw the need for my dad to have somebody that he could trust. Working with him now, it's a miracle. I would never in my entire life would have a relationship that we have now compared to the relationship that I had with my dad. Our relationship right now, I, I'm, you know, sometimes just trying to find so many words to say our relationship. Uh, we love each other. Um, there's not a day that we don't, you know, goes by that we don't talk to each other. Sometimes we're split up in different uh, countries and you know when we see each other, hey, I missed you, you know. He does give me a rough time all the time. Um, he is the boss, 
Um, he uh, pretty much runs the company every day. Our work relationship is just, it's unbelievable. I mean, we are so connected. Like, we'll come into the office and be like, okay, I got to talk to you. Come on in here. And then we'll be talking to each other about the same thing. And he'll be like, I need to talk to you. And then it's, we're thinking about the exact same thing when we need to talk. So I joined the company and I worked for about two years, just sort of helping out and behind the scenes and just working my way up. And um, we were actually in Punta Cana for an education seminar that Joico put on. And uh, my dad and I went for a walk on the beach and he says, I want to give you the reins to the company. I want you to run with it. You've proven yourself. You've shown that you've made great decisions and uh, I want to give you a chance at running the company. And that was uh, about a year and a half ago now. Was, uh, I was the president of the company. He gave me all the reins to make all the decisions. Uh, the first thing I did when I got home was I went and I got a little plaque and I put my name on the door with president underneath and I said, Dad, you've created a monster. Here we go. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's been pretty awesome. And the, the last year and a half as president, it's been fantastic. Uh, uh, but that, yeah, that's how we, I joined the company. He's given me a chance to really live my life right now where I can get creative. I swore to myself that uh, next year is the year that I'm going to get creative and start uh, doing more hair. It's what I was built for and I want to bring that back to show a lot of young talent to really reach for their dreams when they're really doing something they love. Um, I love what I do. I owe a lot to my son. Um, I love him to bits and uh, we work well together and you know uh, we talk about that we want to share our relationship when we do some talking uh, you know in the industry that lots of times father family um, business doesn't work but hopefully that our relationship we can inspire other father and son or you know daughters that they can work with their parents and uh, have a really wonderful time. Our relationship is something pretty special and, and we've, we've got plans to try to share that with other people because you know we do see so many family businesses that the business puts the family into turmoil and it tears them apart and we just want to help people and, and uh, you know I think we have a lot to share when it comes to uh, the family business and how easy it can be to work together. So much to do with being successful in business comes from intuition and I feel like that's something that my dad is really, really good at. He has amazing intuition and he's always taught me to trust my gut. So I have a very defined goal of how I want my brand to be and how I want with David to be and nothing will make me waver from that. As I uh, did my hairdressing and the clients showed me different things in life that there was a, a much better way of uh, learning a much better way of feeling and when I had a chance to be on stage and be able to get applause from hairdressers that they loved my work and they came over and wanted to take pictures with me and you know inside I was crying because you know like what's happening you know this energy takes over and I had the gift to be able to uh, talk to people and get them laughing and uh, get them to you know try something new you know with their hair when they go back to work you know the real defining factor for David is having my dad on the front lines now you know he goes he goes out onto the road with the sales reps and goes into salons. There's no other company where the founder is going into the salons in the front line. Like, he'll go and do a class, you know, in front of two people. And then the next day he could be on stage in front of 2,000 people. So he's just a very humble man and, and he loves what he does. You know, we, we've been at hair shows and he's asked me to put his cell phone number up on screen so the hairdressers, he can communicate and they can send him pictures of the stuff he's working on. I was like, Dad, are you crazy? Like, you're going to get pictures and messages left, right and center. He's like, oh, I love it. You know, that's just the person he is. And he's just... What sets our brand apart is, is having that, uh, that founder that's on the front lines every day. 
You know, my dad's job is, is, since I've come on board, is more focusing on creation of new products and the creative side of things and, and cutting hair again, getting back to doing what he's best at as well. I, I always say that he's the talent and I'm the suit, so I put his crazy ideas into play and tweak them. You know, sometimes the creative process with Reed David is so, it's pretty funny. If people saw it, they'd laugh because my dad will come in and he'll just be like, I got this amazing idea, Marco. He's like, okay, think about this. And he'll pitch me something that's so out of this world, you know, he wants to, I can't mention it because it might come true and then we, we got to keep it under wraps. But I'll be like, there's no way we could do that. We can't have, are you kidding? You're crazy, like never happening. And then, you know, I'll go home and I'll percolate a little bit on it and I'll tweak it a bit. And then I'll come in and I'll say, dad, what if we did? And he'll be like, yes, perfect. You know, our creative process is, is uh, it's very unique in the way things go. You know, he'll pitch it and no matter how crazy it is, he'll pitch it to me and then I'll, we'll tweak it and, and perfect it and then come out with something special. The way that I've helped my dad is to try to refine those crazy ideas, to bring them into something that can be brought to market, that can uh, be you know, profitable and sustainable as well in the long run, as opposed to you know, coming out with these wild ideas and rushing it. Uh, we just refine each other's ideas really well. And for me, you know, I'm building this brand and building Redavid to be a legacy brand that I can pass down to my children. You know, it's something that I totally believe in. Discover your feelings. That's what it's all about. Discover who you are, what makes you feel, and be able to put those feelings in the right places, in your mind, in your soul, and in your spirit. And that is it. It's not the money, it's not the things, it's who you are as a person. I know what it's like uh, crying, I know what it's like being depressed, I know what it's like being, you know, not to eat. At the end of the day, you got yourself and your mind and your feelings. And if you can com combine all those, you actually become pretty happy. It's a big sense of pride for me to change, uh, you know, the history of our name and, and the, the troubled past. You know, we're kind of changing our stars. And, and my dad, I'm just happy to be a part of it to see him get some success because he's worked so hard. You know, he's 62 now. and. I've seen him go through so much. I've seen him get taken advantage of. I've seen him lose control of companies. I've seen the success and everything. And now to, to be in it with him, that's pretty special. He's such a humble man. I mean, he doesn't need much. And he always says, you know, this is yours, this is yours. And, you know, I think he might be making up for the, the non-relationship that he had with his father, with me. So I think, uh, you know, if you ask anybody about the type of man my dad is, the they'll say the same things that I do. He's a special individual.